Sif War. Hello, gentlemen. This is Some Weird Paste. And while my camera is small, that I'm not the big epicenter of this video. That is my boy, Cavity. Hello, Cavity hello, is a How we doing? great core artist. He, he's a little on the smaller end, but I have been a big fan for a good while. I actually was introduced to your channel from Rip and Rip. That's actually the first oh. time I heard Thank anything you, from I, you. I, I, I appreciate it, man. Yeah, no, it's... Jesus, yeah, it's been been a little while of making music now, and I'm excited to be on here, man. I appreciate you asking me. Sit. Yeah, um, I I still remember what was it? You made the Cry of Fear break core, the Stockholm. Yeah, shit. Yeah, that was a little while ago now. That was, I think, that was the first thing I did that sort of got like, even though it was, I think at the time it was like two thousand views, but everything I had was sat on like fucking thirty views, fifty views. So then I was there like, holy shit, I've made it. You know, thousand yeah, views, fucking yeah. hell. But it once was, once that big view count hit, it's just like. Ooh. it's like shit man yeah no i've seen your channel man you got like some big bits in your uh on your stuff as well so definitely. Oh, that's so. that's only the yandere dev videos and most of the time people are like oh dude yad he's talking about yandere dev it's, again it's important content mate someone's got to talk about the fella and his nonsense adventures <laughs> i don't want to talk about him anymore. no no i, 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 I would quite like to talk about his samus stole and all, all the stuff he gets up to a bit in great detail potentially you know <laughs> we could talk about that a little more later but i want to first ask you a few questions <laughs> And Go one of it. which being, what inspired you to make Breakcore? Okay, um, I'll go back a little bit on it. So basically, uh, I started making Breakcore, I think, a little over two years ago now. Sort of like, I guess, this new style of Breakcore, this kind of jungly ambient sort of stuff. And I start, I basically, uh, a few years ago when I was in college, which in the UK you do when you're like 16, 17, I went into music because I knew how to play the guitar, didn't know what the fuck I wanted to do, but I was like, uh, I just, you know, I, I don't want to specialize in anything, I just need to do something. And all I listened to at the time was like heavy metal, like deathcore, metalcore, that sort of stuff. And so I just linked up with the other people who made that. And through that, I learned how to re like properly record music in like software, like Logic, which is like Mac's audio production software. So that's kind of how I got into recording music and understanding it. But there was one kid on my course who was sick and he, all he made was he didn't rap, but he made like hip hop instrumentals and trap instrumentals. And then we'd try and flip them on the in there. And through just hanging around with him for too long in the smoking area, he was like, right, I'll teach you how to make it. And so he taught me in Logic, and obviously it's like fucking years ago, so I didn't really remember any of it. But uh, I picked, that's how I got my start in in making stuff that wasn't just like recording guitars into a computer. It was like, you know, actually actually producing something electronic. And then, God, so yeah, a little over two years ago, maybe nearly three years ago now, browsing YouTube one day, and of course, you'll probably know the name, I came across Sewer Slut. And I was like, ah, sewer slot. this is, I was like, this is different because I, ha at that point, like I didn't listen to a lot of electronic music, like as a wide umbrella term. Right. And um, my brother was very heavily into it, but I, yeah, I just didn't have any jump, any specific genre I liked. And I was like, this is good. And then start just binging through the internet, looking for artists I like. I came across like Rory in early twenties, uh, sorry about my face, DJ, uh, producers like that. And I was like, I really want to learn how to make this now. Um, I guess just lead on for that. So then one day I was showing my friends to us. Like, I was like, give this a listen, boys, because they liked a bit of the electronic stuff. And my mate, he's like an artist. And he was like, well, here's the thing. I was like, this, this is a sick project. I, if you want to try and make this, I will make you an album cover and we'll just call it like, that'll be our collaboration. And I was like, yes, yeah, sick, let's do that. So he, within a week, chops me up an album cover. But then the problem was I had to make the fucking, out, uh, the fucking EP. And I was like, shit. So I, over a few YouTube tutorials and like absolutely scuffing the shit out of it within a month, we had the we had the first cavity EP infinite and put it straight out, man. Uh, the one he made is that the one with the subway and the cat, or am I? He gonna... made that one as well. That was the second EP, oh. yeah. So he he made that one as well. That was a photo we took and then like edited the shit out of it. But the one before that, which I think your friend's got, got some good editing it, skills because those look really I... good. Appreciate that, man. Yeah, he he does a bit of YouTube stuff now as well, and like did, did I'm he always appreciate the, the deer for rip and rip. He didn't know. Do you know? What? I was I when I was originally making thumbnails, I had like no sense of what I wanted to make, but there was kind of a bit of a pitfall with Breakcore, and it was what I was seeing other people making. It was that everyone was sort of the anime girl thumbnail, which by no means I'm like slagging off by any means. It you know it's it some of it's conceptually really cool, and people have their own characters and shit, whatever. But I was like, I just don't want to fall into like exactly what everyone else is making on the same level because it's it was already getting a little bit saturated at the time and i was like let's try and do something a little bit different so yeah um so rip and rip was when i was like digging through pinterest at two in the morning drunk and i was like that looks good chop it up a little bit slap a big logo on there which my mate made the logo as well 
It's you, a lot of plot on the end that. You know what's funny, and I, I figured I'd, I'd give you a little. So I have a friend. He works a lot with music. He does kind of the same thing where it's like make trap and like whatnot beats, try to flip them. And he's getting with producers. And I showed him Rip and Rip, and he was like, "This is really good. Like this, this sounds like good." I'm like, "This is the one song that he removed because he said he didn't like it." He's like, "What?" <laughs> And oh, in the middle man. of the song, he went, pause it, pause it for a second. And I went, why? He's like, rewind. And he played it back and he was listening to it. He said, so there's a part where two bits of the audio don't line up for like a split second. And he was like, there. Yeah. Uh, he's like, that. Uh, those parts don't line up. But it makes it sound really cool that it didn't. Do you know what? it's? I, I'd have you. you I assume, when we're done this interview, you know I'm going to listen to that for an hour now, like skipping through looking L- for the spot. But listen, it's, uh... listen for because I, I, it took me a second to notice it, and but now every time I hear it, I'm like, dude, that's even though it's definitely a scuff, it sounds kind of cool. It's, I appreciate it. It's I guess back then because I was so like so now when I make a track right, I won't go, to, I won't get too ahead of myself, but like. It's a lot of like, it's like, I'll spend a whole week on it, like four hours an evening, da da da, going back and like knowing everything I know now, what I need to polish it, labeling all the tracks, you know, EQing everything properly, putting it on like the TV, my phone, like listening to it through like six devices to get an idea of how it sounds for all of them so I haven't missed something. Like looking back then, like the glory, like when you first start doing something and you can just snap five bits together, run it back and forth, like the only finished p- production, like the mastering i did on that was like lowering and uppering volume like putting volumes up and down like it was that glory day where you don't you're so blissfully unaware and i think there's kind of something special about the music you make when you're completely unaware of what you're doing because it just sometimes it just bangs man yeah it just ends up happening um the name cavity where does that come from is that just kind of like a spur where you're just like yeah because i guess it i mean it's like I guess cavity is just like, um, in, I guess you think of teeth, right? It's the first thing, but like, it's a hole in something, right? It's, and it was like a bit edgy and yada yada. But yeah, I just, I was sort of throwing, I already had so many like usernames and shit for different stuff that I was like, oh, okay, I need something new. And I'm, my mate at this point is already making the album cover and I'm like, shit, I gotta get something up together really quickly here. And so I was just sort of writing stuff on my phone and I heard cavity and I was like, John, nah, that, that bangs. And so I sent that to him. And he sent back the logo with like the deathcore font, and I was like, "That's it, it's perfect." Yeah, like, we'll that deathcore font with cavity looks sick. He, I appreciate he did that. that, man. He did that as well. Yeah, if you, he actually did that thing. Where, of course, I, I don't do art for shit, but he used Procreate, and he flipped it so it says Cavivac instead of cavity. And I was like, before the album goes out, like you know, the EP goes out, can you fix that? He was like, "No, nah, I can't be asked." And I was like, "Brilliant, it's finished. Let's put it out there, man." So. <laughs> <laughs> the cavivac is like too good a th- i could have by now put it on got someone on fiverr to fix it but it means too much to me looking like cavivac that I, that's the way it has to be man yeah i i was uh what was it i i still remember when i was trying to show my friends uh like your music because i was like dude i Appreciate this it, guy is like really uh, he's not really that heard of he doesn't have that many views but his stuff's good i type in cavity break core and I just get a bunch of dental instruction videos <laughs> about cavities, was... and my friends I... are sitting there. It's like, so is this what he makes? I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's it's core. Hold on, give me a it's... second. But first of all, I really appreciate that, man. Like, it means a lot. And um, when I when I first started producing, there was just a few close friends. I was like, right, just uh, look, look up. I put this thing out. I didn't send the link. I'm like, look me up, and they're like, sending me back screenshots of like the dental videos. And like, is that you in the chair, mate? Is that you? Is it, bro? And I'm like, shut up. Fucking, I'll send you a link later. Just st- stop. <laughs> stop, please. Yeah, please, God, like, the whole group, lads group chat is just filled with fucking people in dental chairs. Like, I'm certain that's him, mate. That's that's Cavity, isn't it? I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. That, that Cavity, bro. Uh, so you, you said uh, you took inspiration kind of like from Sewer Slant. Uh, mm-hmm. what, what's your opinion on kind of like the whole... What what do you believe is your kind of like genre of breakcore? Because it can be really like really diverse. It's wide. I, I looked it's at really the, wide, yeah. I looked at the chart for it and it was like eighty different things. And I I feel it's, like at almost everything I've listened to yours has kind of a different style to it. And that's why I, I that's why I really like it. Because some of the other ones they're like really generic. Like I'll, I'll like it's, listen to it. I'm like all right, give it a try. And it's just like, you can tell where the sampling's coming from. And it's like, oh, it's I heard like, this in like two different songs. But with it yours, it almost I, sounds like a remix more than a new track, right? Because it's one long sample that's just, yeah, no, I get you, I get I, you. I still remember, I don't remember who it was, but somebody was like posting 
like break cores and you could tell like dead ass they just like they took apart the audio of a sewer slut song in like fruity loops they took out some parts and then just mixed it together and people yeah. were lighting them up in the comments they're like this is just like straight stolen I've got like two two things to mention this shit. I don't want to go down the. I don't know if you've heard of Acid Girl, but there's definitely a route I could go down on that. Acid. I hold the vibe. And this is this is beautiful, but it's a whole segment. So I'll I'll go. I guess I go back to your question, like different genres of breakcore and where I fit in. So what Sewer made was like super ambient soundscapes with like these fat breaks on top of them, and it was just like. Like, it's clear that their understanding of like what they're making, like even like their music theory, is just so solid. Like. I don't even know how to explain it. It's it's like, because you can just put a sewer album on for like an hour, right? Just let it blast because it's like, it's varied. Every project is in some way kind of a little bit conceptual. And they, importantly, they really frontiered that, like having this kind of anime character at the front shit, which went on, which is still going today, man. Like yeah, people are creating it, they, OCs. They made and... that shit big. Literally, and uh, I, I think of like there's a uh, I can't remember the name now. Shit, I think it's called Used Cunt, and they've basically done what Sewer did, but like uh, I guess a little bit faster and like their own style to it. And they've managed to make a whole like fucking career out of that on Spotify. But I guess when I started making music, as I said, like I didn't really understand how to make electronic, and I was sort of just like trying to scuff my way through. So when I when I first started, it was like sampling, obviously, which I'm sure you know sampling. Like you take your song, you try and to make a sample good, you and your own, you need to like chop the shit out of it. You got to do what down pitch it, turn it. You can even just turn like someone singing into a fucking instrument, right, and then write your own melody with it, something like that. And um, I guess I guess at first, because I wasn't really sure what I was doing, I was kind of oversampling a little bit, which is part of the reason I originally didn't like riff and riff that much. Like really? when I came back to it. Because it was... So the sample in Rip and Rip is from Amnesia, and Machine for Pigs. Wait, what? Yeah, yeah. And then I, I can't... I'd have to try and remember now because this is like when I was cranking out like two tracks a week From or Machine for Pigs. That Pigs. is was, cool. I didn't and know then that. I would basically go around like finding... Because gaming instrumentals like... Oh, game OSTs are perfect for this sort of stuff because it's a... It's music that needs to be like, because when you're playing a game, it can't be the full focus, right? The game is, it's got to be ambient and it's got to be sad at the back and it's got to be long as well. So normally it's long chords, long pads. And so it's perfect just for like chopping the shit out of and putting drums on top of and then putting a bass line on or whatever you'd like to use. Um, I can't remember what the fuck I was saying now, but yeah. Um, yeah, so Machine for Pigs was the sample for that, but because I've sampled things now, but I've like obliterated the sample and like made sure I really like it. I put that track out a few weeks ago. I miss M Ray, and that sample was like a p piano. I'd down tune, chopped, down tuned some pieces, rearranged it, just done shit tons too. And you're like, well, that's a good sample, right? Because you you could hear the original and probably not even realize it was what I was using. Whereas like if you could if you knew Machine for Pigs and for some reason you knew the fucking OST, you'd probably be able to decipher that's what I've used. I guess so that was when i first took it down you and you know what it's like when you're making like content you can get so in your own head about shit when you've worked on it for a while like yeah i i was gonna say i was so upset when that had that because i had it downloaded on my youtube because i i'd listen to it like every now and then in the car and uh, everything and then it disappeared from my downloads and i was like oh shit because at the time i wasn't able to pull your name up because type in cavity you get dental instructions and i'd use you get the dental instructions i'd mate. use rip and rip to like oh i click rip and rip listen to it a bit then i can access your channel so i can like listen to more of the music and i was like fuck no i gotta find this again <laughs> and that's oh, i think that's honestly. the same day when i i was like yo what happened to rip and rip that shit was tight <laughs> <laughs> i appreciate it but yeah no i saw your comment i was like you forget, and I guess you probably find this in what you do, you forget the reach of, like, even smaller stuff, like tracks that got 300 on them. Um, when I first started putting stuff on Spotify, uh, obviously you get it content ID'd, right? So if it's flagged up somewhere on YouTube, it doesn't just, like, try and claim it or whatever. It'll tell you where it's from. So I, when I first put Pseudo up on Spotify, it, like, flags up everything that's ever used it on YouTube. Uh, and I'm looking on there and there's like videos like YouTube shorts of people at like a Colombian house party twerking and like fucking my song is on in the background and I'm like fucking I never even would have imagined your right. song but, yeah it's just bizarre man or there's like some geezer who's doing a 19 hour painting stream and like in the middle my track comes up in there somewhere and you're just like fucking we just never have known that's like, crazy 
It's wild. So you, it? like, you got a bigger reach than you know, man. That, that, yeah, what well, I, I imagine the Brazilians you, twerk to your music. The, 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 the Colombians, Brazilians, who mate, they're fucking loving a bit of it. Clearly, so uh, that's crazy. <laughs> gotta do it for the Brazilians, bro. Gotta fucking... do it for the Brazilians, man. Um, that when you explain the machine for pigs thing sample in your uh, for rip. Okay, riff actually, rip. that's you, good. It sounds like you're saying riff and rip. Is it riff, riff and rip? It's, it's probably the mask, mate. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, or the accent, because I, 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 I started getting confused. I'm like, wait, is it actually riff and rip? And I've been typing it wrong this whole time. No, no, you're good. It's just we, I, I call everyone boss man and mate and fella, and it just oh. all blends all everything into one. You know, it's, it's all just right. Like, you know, but British people don't with, worry about it. With the song Stockholm, what was crazy is I was listening to the Cry Fear soundtrack. I was doing some writing, and one of the songs came on, and I listened to it for a second. I'm like. Why does this sound familiar? Fuck me. Where have I heard this? And I go back to your song, Stockholm, and I'm like, oh, that's where he sampled it. It's actually yeah. from Cry of Fear. So I thought Shit, that was, like, the coolest thing ever. That's it. I think in hindsight, like, and it kind of ties into what I said earlier, was I would have much rather called that a remix now, like, knowing what I know, than a, like, its own song. Which I guess, it, you know, it's, it's a small track. It doesn't really matter. But because in that's kind of like almost the full song, but I've rearranged it a little bit. And then I've just put some fat breaks on it and a few little spare instruments and stuff. I, but, I think yeah, it works, no, man. man. That, that shit works. It, man. It's Fucking... loud. Um, uh, I was going to say, like, uh, it seems like, with with your style, I I like kind of the inclusion of that ambience because a lot of the times. So there's this artist I listen to, Fentanyl. I don't know if you've heard of them. I know Fentanyl. Don't you worry, mate. I definitely not know the dr not the drug. Not no, the drug. no, not that one. No. Uh, the the <laughs> one with the cat that's always committing suicide in the pictures. Fucking great stuff. Yeah, they make some crazy stuff. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to get an interview with them, but that would be. I, That'd be sick, man. You know. Yeah, actually, that dives into one of my other points that I was actually going to talk about. I was actually worried about doing this interview for oh, really? a few reasons is the break core like atmosphere. Sometimes when I like, so like when I'm listening to Fentanyl's music, I sit there and I'm like, this stuff's great. I wonder how the person is in real life. Cause I, <laughs> I like it, it's some, like when it comes to sewer slide, I know they were a little weird and, yeah, and that kind of set my like basis for like, I, I hope like not every break core artist is like, super weird and i'm like oh i'm yeah, gonna do an interview shit. with cavity he's gonna be cool it's like please tell like, me this bro. isn't like some some really like strange dude in like a basement you, somewhere i'm like turn, turn but up you, you turned like, out bro. to be like this regular normal chill dude so i'm like i appreciate oh, it perfect <laughs> But you turn up and I'm just like off the fence, right? And I'm just like, yeah, man, I appreciate the interview. Like coughing into the microphone or something. Like, that was the, that was you're, the like, you're like huffing crack pipe on the side. You're like, well, yeah, sorry, man. I see a golf screen for a minute. <laughs> fucking <laughs> coughing up or something. You, know? you like start tweaking. It's like, hold on, mate. I think there's somebody in my fucking walls. <laughs> <don't do> <laughs> <laughs> the British accent made that for me. Fuck it out. I, I think you've seen, um, it's probably overplayed. You've seen Smiling Friends, I'm guessing, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, you know the first episode where they go and visit the guy and he's got the gun held to his head, right? Oh, <laughs> could, could be that. You're over the corner. I'm like, yeah, man, it's not great this week. It's How so are you great. doing, bro? My, I, I have $1,400 of credit card debt that's that's just sitting there. Spend it all on Fent. It's, it's been, been awful, awful mate. Fent. It's. <laughs> um, I, I, I love doing those accents. Sometimes uh, pe people find them like really rude, especially when I do, uh, if, if they have the same accent. So, nah, it's great. It's great. Yeah, Honestly, but if, if you come down to my voices. house and you, if you put that voice on when you came to my house, I'll welcome you in as one of the family. But like, he's clearly British. Bring him in, voices. Yeah, he's one or, of us. Or I could do some of my other stuff. Like, I can do the Russian voice and do it pretty well. You, it's. I'll, I'll just throw it in there. So, when uh, I started producing Break and I like was like, I want to get better at this because I'm just, you know, I'm getting a bit stagnant with just sampling shit and not knowing what I'm doing. I just started joining like these random Break or Discord like groups. And you jump in there and you'd be like, everyone has like a like an a, a English username. And you jump in the call and they're there just like talking in Russian. One that's got Sorry. the radio <laughs> blasted in the back. And you're like, I'm there like, hello, fellas. You know, how are we? And they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. hello, you know, you got FL Studio Collaborate. I'm like, yeah, yeah, go on then, fuck it. You know, and, yeah, you uh, FL hello. Studio Collaborate. You, yes, yes, yes. Yes. I used pirated version from two years ago. Do you have that one? I need the same version as you. And I'm like, yeah, oh, fucking hell. That did happen to me when I collaborated with someone, actually. I finished the whole, like, um, like basis for the track. 
sent it to them and they're like yeah i can't open it bro i use the pirated version can you, can you remake it <laughs> oh, two my... versions earlier and i'm just like i did it man but i was like just sat there for an hour just like fucking chain chain vaping just pissed off like fuck's sake <laughs> chain, vaping. chain vaping it's the new it's what the youths do i'm sure dude oh my god that, that's amazing so would would that like happen a, do you do that a bit like collaborate with people on track? so i did a track with uh i did a track with omni because he he just reached out to me and that's what i put on the Who's omni? I say the last ep uh, omni was a lad who messaged me on discord from russia and he was like i like your what was really weird is he i think he had like once two songs on soundcloud that were kind of the sort of the first things you make as everyone does and he reached out and he was like can we collaborate and i was like yeah fuck it go on him can we collaborate so, and... I, I like your music sir i like your music like brother your music, and I, brother. I, I never even talked to the guy like <laughs> never even spoke to him just just discord type and i'd be like you know here's this and he's like yeah no i use a pirated plugin can you pirate this one so it works and i'm like for fuck's sake wait <laughs> but he was a good lad and but i he only had like two songs out when i collaborated with him we put <clears throat> sorry we put the track together over like two weeks and I like haven't looked at his channel. And before the track is out, he suddenly dropped like two EPs, fucking fight. He's got so much. Beer. And I think he was just sitting on all of it. And I was like, it's funny because I I don't I don't want to say like I took a chance collaborating with him, but I wasn't sure like he knew how to fucking collaborate with anyone. Like you got you know you have to send files back and forth, and like you got to kind of agree on a concept. And if you only put two songs out, you kind of don't really know what you've been doing yourself. And then like it just happens that he sat on like fucking eighteen songs and just drops them all, and they're all fucking bangers. And I'm like, never mind, man. Fuck oh, it. they were all good. They're all good, yeah. No, I was happy with what we made. It came out, came out decent. So, but yeah, I think I you'll, learned you'll a lot. You'll have to of... send me a link to the one you did a collaboration with uh, him on. Yeah, you know, definitely, man. I'll get that shot across to you. Um, yeah. But I think, like I mentioned, I was in the Discord with like the random Russian guys who were like, some of these geezers are like thirty-five and they've like, they've they've been producing for like fifteen years and they've just moved on to this uh, this kind of like genre and they're like, oh yeah, yeah. So they know they know the production inside software inside out. But I learned so much just like not even saying the thing, just sitting in these screen share calls where you watch a cracked out Russian dude just fucking moving clips around his screen, putting tracks together so quickly. Like, and so even though I was getting yelled at in Russian a lot, I, I learned so much from those uh, <laughs> those lovely fellows who were just like, yeah, screaming in Russian all the time at me. You get like, yelled at in Russian? Yeah, and yelled at I'm there like, well, then I'd screen share and I'd be like, yeah, bro, do you think this works? And I'd move a few clips around and they're just there like, oh, I'm like... Yeah, bro, I hope you like it. That's good. Like it. That's it, bro. It's like playing CSGO or some shit, but he's supposed to be helping me, man. It's fucking... Break core CSGO. Break girl CSGO, man, definitely. I don't know. Next song, bro. Next song. No. Next song. Def uh, do you know what? You know, maybe when we do like uh, April Fool's or something, who knows? We're past it now, but next year we'll work it out. Next year. Um. By the way, I, I noticed you have a tattoo. Yeah, I've got too many tattoos, I think is the problem. I think I got a bit carried away, but... um. Oh, you I got, got a lot? I got, like, oh, yeah, I got the sleeve on that arm and then the sleeve on that arm, but yeah, I just... Oh, that's know, really man. cool. I appreciate that, brother. Yeah, I just... I think I, I got, like, when I first turned 18, I was like, right, I'm going to get so many tattoos, and you broke a shit, so you get, like, one. And then I, like, over the next three years, like, slowly filled up this arm. And then with this arm, I was just, like, literally about six months ago, I was like... Yeah, no, I'm just going to do the whole thing as quick as I can. So I was booking in like five hour slots of an artist and just hammering the whole thing out in one go. But um, I do actually, I don't know if I'm going to show it in the hoodie. I do actually, very controversially, have a sewer slot tattoo up there. Oh, my mate wait. did in. My mate, oh, hang on, I'm not going to get light on this shit. I'll send you a photo afterwards if you want. Um, I think the I, oh, I see it. Yeah. Oh, shit. shit. Wow. And I got, um because this arm, like, I've got quite a consistent theme going with because I stayed with the same guy. My mate did that in his kitchen with a tattoo gun when he was drunk. And it's one of my favorite tattoos I have. That's, like, <laughs> he was drunk and he did that? Yeah, no, I paid him the alcohol to do the tattoo. I just didn't think he'd drink it first. actually not bad for being, like, drunk. Yeah, no, I was cracking stuff, mate. I was well happy with it. I'm like, I think sometimes your most scuffed up tattoos have got you to be your favorites, you know? Yeah, dude. My my friends get uh, get a bunch. Of, I don't I don't really want to get tattoos because I haven't really decided on anything, and nah, I don't want to I don't want to like put something on and then like in the future be like, man, that was dumb. Because I I have got some. I I can't. I won't show on screen. Do you remember the Bart Simpson cake that said "Eat Pant" that went around the internet for ages? Do you remember that? Oh no. Oh, do you, do you, have you seen it? Have you? Yeah, I have. I've, I've got that tattooed on my ankle that I got um another mate to do in his conservatory when we were drunk on gin. So that was that's another one I've got. You know. Uh <laughs> 
<laughs> sure. Eat pan. That's one day the grandkids will be there asking, you know, oh, what does that one mean, Cav? Oh, it's eat pan, and it, you know, eat I can't, pan. can't really fucking explain it. Yeah. yeah. Did, did you kids ever watch Bart Simpson? No. Did we're you... about that Sigma Skibbity Riz. Oh no! Do you imagine <laughs> that's it? Like, oh, do you have any Skibbity Toilet ones, Granddad? Shut the fuck up, you little cunt. It's fucking. Good. Did you imagine? It'd be disastrous. It's like. Pop Papa, do you have any uh, skimmy toilet words? Shut up! He's <laughs> fucking mate, the two foot him out the door. It'd have to happen. I couldn't, couldn't be having a kid like that. It'd be ridiculous. Yeah, no. I do fear for the children. <laughs> so, I, I, bro, I fear for them too. This, and, what, what is your opinion on the on the weird brain rot like side of YouTube, like with all oh. that shit going on? I think the problem is because the content itself is like fucking out of its mind, four second TikTok scrolling stuff, right? Because that's what the kids are glued to. I sound like such a boomer when I'm saying that. The fucking youth when they TikTok, but like, um, it sounds like it's oh, fucking hell. But I guess what we get off the back end is some of the best meme content and like deep internet lore you need to know to understand meme content you could possibly get, you know? So, yeah, like the fucking. And especially, I love the the chi when Chinese people do TikTok and it's like the weird fucking cat suddenly popping up with his big ass head singing songs. It's like, you know, we get some of the best content we could get from this. So I, I can't what look was it. The, with the cat, it's a chippy chippy chippa pa pa Oh, no, not that one. No, uh, oh, no. The one where it's uh, the cat going, Sunday I was learning. You might not have seen it. It was really fucking brain dead. I, I, uh, it, I still remember uh, there's, there's this one where like, it looks like a completely normal cooking video. The guy like drops something. He's definitely Chinese because it's all he's speaking. And then he he's zooms done. in on his cat and the, it, it does, does a deep fake on the cat. And the cat's right. doing like the face motions where it's like, This is what I'm talking about. This is the content I'm talking about. And I was like, what the uh, fuck that, am I that, watching? <laughs> That's a chain reaction from what the kids in China want to see. We wouldn't know that existed and let it haunt us in the way it does if it wasn't for them. So we got to thank them, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, I mean, they, they bro, <laughs> I, I use, um, I don't use TikTok, I use YouTube Shorts, which is... Yeah, same, same. I, I, dude, I can't, I can't put up with TikTok, because all it is, it's like, when I first downloaded TikTok, I didn't even, like, set any preferences or anything. I kind of just started scrolling. And it was like 10 minutes of scrolling, and I'm like, all right, I'm just seeing women's ass all the time. Where's all the memes, bro? Yeah, no, it's fucking, oh, it's, so, um, I don't know, I'll probably out myself here, it'd be funny, though. Um, <laughs> I made one TikTok ever, because, like, everyone, when I was in, like, Discord, was like, bro, you gotta have a TikTok, like, that's how we get big these days. You gotta spam these fucking posts. I'm like, I don't do that, man, it looks shit. And, um, I had one TikTok account, and I, all my stories involve me being drunk, but that's, you know, I live in England, it makes sense, right? <laughs> Um, and I made this fucking, uh, little short video of, you, you played Mordhell before, the game with the fucking big swords? I played it a little, but I know more about it from my friends who constantly scream at the TV over it. This is it, because, and this, I guess, ties in, re this is like a collaboration of worlds. It ties into the sewer slot controversies from back in the day, because I guess, oh. like, the my final wrap-up on sewer, right, is, like, very unwell person, little bit of a cunt made very good music that's enough that's fine you know what i mean i don't so, think they were a nonce or a pedo i think it's just actually, all the bit. Uh, so what was what was the actual controversy because i from what i remember the main controversy i knew was they had an album that was just straight the n-word and it was a meme album and i thought i was like that's kind of like dumb that they'd get cancelled over that which was like five years ago yeah and it's, and that was that was, was like was um, that the main thing or what was like the main thing no that pushed them on? there was it's a few different bits like uh so there was the there was that one which was uh that was back when they went by the name sad boy sheldon and they used to like they were just like making remixes and shit and like weird meme albums and um but that was i guess that's the same youtube era as like you remember like idubs leafy all that shit right yeah so like being edgy was the name of the game and like so i just i just don't give a shit i think that's the thing is like you know you wouldn't do it now no one fucking would but like to try and they were probably like 17 at the time thinking they're fucking edgy like i don't care um yeah. They then, what was the other one? They fucking put someone's suicide phone call in the beginning of an album as like an edgy thing. Oh, which wait. Which was a little bit. That, was that a more recent one they did? For, no, like, no, that was, that was their, that was their, uh, their friend, part, uh, their girlfriend, I think. Uh, their girlfriend killed themselves. So they, they, they put that at the end of the album. That was not, not like a suicide phone call, just like a tribute thing. And then I guess the ones in, what was the other one? It was. They did an album that had naked anime girls on them, and I think someone said, like, they look really young, and they were like, yeah, that looks weird, and just did, like, redid the album cover, so people were like, nonce, and I'm like, yeah, I don't know, like, definitely, definitely weird, but I don't know.
probably not a pedo, you know what I mean? Probably. Yeah, there, there, there's somebody who posts a ton of break core. Uh, sorry to deviate, but I, I figured no, this, was, this is a funny thing to talk about. But their main way, their, their break core is ass. But their main way to try to garner attention is they put in the title, like, if you look it up, Sewer Slut is a pedo. You, it, one of their songs will probably come up. And the, yeah. it, it might come up. But they, they, they released a song called, like, Sewer Slut is a Child Grooming Pedophile. And I the think... break the break core is it's ass it's trash it's a mix of like ripped sewer slut beats and like their own stuff the of uh, the only good part about it is the ripped sewer slut stuff and everything else about it is trash. I think you found acid girl, mate. That was gonna bring back up. I think you found acid girl. That's so an acid I'll give you, girl. I'll give you a super quick rundown on what I know about them. So in oh, it would have been just after sewers sort of like stop making music. So we're talking like twenty twenty one, I think. And so someone came up and started making the most horrendous fucking music. It's all the same preset drums they've got ready in a file. They chuck the horrid sample in. Then they'd have like their shitty VR chat avatar doing a fucking dance on the video. And they were making a song a day for two different channels pretending to be two different people. And then it turned out they had an entire network of about fucking 18 different accounts that all commented on each other's shit and pretended to celebrate for each other. And that they were having listening parties together that weren't real. And then they had an additional, I think, 90 channels that were all making breakcore mixes, blending their songs in with Sewer Sluts to try and promote them. And someone worked out, like, between all the SoundCloud Plus accounts. Like, they were collaborating with, like, another account and having full-on chats with them in the comments. And it was the same person. And then I did a load of digging last year and worked out that this person, back in 2016, made a really shit meme page. And then... It got like popular to bully. Like you can find the remnants of this. It was called Clemmy.mp4. Like this is a whole rabbit hole you can find. I think I and... heard about somebody brought that up a bit ago. I think somebody made a comment on a video saying like oh, really? something like look at Clemmy or something. And I just didn't know what it was. So I was like, all right, this person's just... like uh, talking about shit I, I've shit... never heard before. Shit meme shit memes that were made in Photoshop and that. And yeah. then what was it? Then they eventually tried to sell another girl's nudes that they'd stolen from them on Instagram, pretending to be them, and got called out for it. So they pretended to kill themselves and then reappeared as Acid Girl a year later. Jesus So it's like this mental... Christ. They put this statement out at one point and it was like, yo, just so you guys know, like I've just been signed to a major label. I've got to keep it on the quiet. And me and my girlfriend, who is a VTuber, and my sister, who's also a successful VTuber, are all living in Tokyo together. And I've got a vinyl deal. And I was just there. It's like del- schizophrenic ramblings. And it's gone on for so long at this point. Like They've renamed channels. They've got like fucking nine different accounts that they post to daily. It's so bad. And someone worked out that they're spending on average about two grand a year on expenses running all of this. So they're what making the a loss. Fuck? Like, this has got to be like someone's rich, uh, some rich kid, uh, you know, sort of rich parents. Just like this kid is off the deep end. Let's just fund them and like leave them to it. And this is how they're spending their days now. It's fucking that's sorry. I just went on a whole really tangent insane. about that. But... Yeah, no, that's actually really cool. Uh, I've never heard about that. But I, yeah. they, that they might be the one who made the things where it was like sewer slut is a child grooming pedo. And that I remember it. reading the comments for that video. And everybody was lighting them up. I I remember reading the title. I'm like, oh, I, I didn't know about this. Is this like an expose or something? And then I listened to the shitty ass music. And I was like, okay, it's a it's, it's, a, fucking... it's a song. Well, they cool. make they make rap now as well. So they make you rap. Out, rap with a voice changer, and it's fucking painful, mate. So you you when you're ready to, you binge through that. You'll you'll love every minute. I'm sure. Mm, so, oh my fucking... god I, I... sorry i really went off there didn't i fuck me no that's no that's actually a perfect segment i appreciate that that was uh <laughs> it's all good man I, i've never heard Just anything the... like that that's that's crazy yeah man Oof. so you uh, actually i want to go back to you were talking about like how long it takes to make these uh, how how long would you say it roughly takes to make like one song if it's if it's like a track from like a track i'm making from scratch and not a remix I reckon I'll probably do, what, like, four hours every day for... This is, like, in the evenings, obviously, like, four hours a day for, what, fucking five days. So, like, yeah, I guess, like, 20 hours. And then I'll often, like, leave it on the counter for a month, sort of think about it, come back to it, make a few tweaks for a few hours, and then finally put it out. Yeah, so I guess, yeah, I guess, like, 20, 20 the, hours. Is... the strategy where you were, like, put it on, like, multiple devices and listen to it. To this make is it. Sure like, listen to it audio. in the car, listen to it, like, fucking through your phone, through shit earphones, through good earphones. And, That's... like... 
get a sense of how it sounds. Can't lie, that's actually a pretty creative way to like just make sure it's good. It's like because sometimes if you're listening it, to it on like a phone or headphones, it might sound different than what it would be like played through like a yeah, Bluetooth speaker. You, when I start because like my original tracks, I didn't even use bass in, and like I guess that's a valid tactic because people like sorry about my face are like sick producers, but they don't use bass in their music a lot of the time. But I wasn't using it because it was a style choice. I just didn't know how the fuck to right. And then when I started using it, you use your expensive speakers and it sounds fucking great. And then you listen to it for your TV. There's no bass and it just sounds like fucking someone kicking a tin around. It's like, yeah, never mind. Actually, that was a shit one. <laughs> kicking a tin around. Oh, my God. Yeah. Ob objectively, like, if you had to say, what would be, like, the song you made that you believe is your best? And what would be the song you made you think is your worst? Oh, can I look at my channel real quick? Is Go right? for it, yeah. And, and, Two seconds. Um, I, I figure I'd ask, because I, I, I love to kind of get the opinion. It's like, where do you stand on like some of your own content? That's While I'm looking, can I ask you, what's yeah. your favorite video and what's your least favorite video you've made? Ooh, that is... I'm going to pull up my chat. Wait. Ooh, this is the way to do fuck, it. <laughs> will this fuck the recording? I, this I, is it. No, you're good, mate. Don't worry. <laughs> I've got a feeling it's going to... Ah, oh, it's going to blank it out. I'm going to look, though, and since we're both yeah. staring at each other's You're channels. Good, um, this is it. Yeah. Uh, over the course of making some content, I've made some, like, real stinkers. Like, some of the videos I, I've made, I think, like, I, I, I removed a bunch of them because I sat there and I was like, holy shit, some of these are really bad. I got it, like, the, like, some of my quality control used to be so like shitter and i i'd sit there i'd i most of the time i i had a lot of problems back then so most of the time when i was making it i didn't really care what i was posting so i'd be like yeah, i i don't just put something out right yeah just pump something out have a bit of fun with it and whatnot and then i'd like go back through it and then i'd be like oh fuck Ugh. yeah it's fucking i so what have you worked out what your favorite is are you still scrolling <laughs> I, I i just got into my channel because youtube fucked up oh with the, no you're good so if you click your icon now it doesn't pop up for me to like my channel so uh, i have to yeah you have to fucking ask pain the ass man oh i know what was my favorite to make was the guy it, it was three years ago i made this video called the cuties movie and this dude oh no I, I know him. about that you know that oh christ so i was the first guy to talk about him I, I, I know I was because when it, when it came out, it was kind of low view count. And I I looked at it and I was like, okay, this would make like peak content. Didn't do great on the yeah, views. Yeah. That's fine. But I, I enjoyed yeah, making yeah. it. And then the shit show that came from like just knowledge of that guy was insane. It wasn't on my video. Nobody was like hitting my comments. But it was because when... I reached out to him, believe it or not, I did, and I tried to ask him some questions, and I was going to make a whole video about it. The problem is, the guy is like, he doesn't regret anything. This isn't Sneeko by chance, is it? No, not Sneeko. It was no, no, I thought you see, because he was defending cuties. I was like, oh, bro, he's been ripping the Sneeko. I, I couldn't, I couldn't even make a video on Sneeko, because that shit, once Critical got to it, it's like, I have no chance. I'm not going to yeah, make it's a fucking, video. Yeah, it's fucking, it's such But right? this guy, he's this white dude, and his, in his intro is literally... Hello, cuties. And right uh, when I heard that, I was like, this is gold. And hello, cuties. make a video on it. I try to get an interview with him. He doesn't want to do voice or anything, from what I remember. And I keep asking. I'm like, oh, so, like, do you regret making the video? Because this looks, like, really weird. He's like, no, I believe everything in it. And I'm like, ooh. Uh. Oh. Yeah, no. And, oh. And, 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 like, the way he talked about the girls in the thing were, like, I was like, nah, you can't, Mate, like, that, say that. You that film was fun. Oh, it's, oh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, I can't even explain. Like, it's just like, it's, I, I was certain when I first seen, you were talking about, of course, the Netflix one, right? This cutie's fucking, we're on the same page here. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, the yeah, Netflix that cute, one. Dodgy, yeah. dodgy cutie's film. Yeah, I just want to make sure. Dodgy, yeah. Um, dodgy's I, I, one I, way, more like federal dodgy prison is like level the, shit. Yeah, more, more, yeah, fed fucking Daniel Larson's favorite kind of stuff, you know? Fucking. <laughs> Daniel Larson. <it's, laughs> It could be, but it's probably one of his favorites. But um, when I saw, first saw that come out, I was like, "Bro, I'm certain this is just like some Fed bait. Like they're gonna get you to click on it, and then you go to prison. Like that. I'm not. That is some pedo fucking film. I ain't going near that." 
And yeah, no, it's it's insane to me that that ever got released. But it's a it's a French film, isn't it? Right, I think. Mm, I I don't know. It promotes Muslim like Muslim stuff in it, where it's like, oh, follow Muslim ways or something. I could be completely French. wrong and butchering that, and I like somebody in the comments is going to be like. No, you idiot! I have three hundred watches no, of cuties, and that's I've, not at all what it's about. He's, he's, a, he's a pretty mate. He's got it as his fucking live but, wallpaper, mate. But probably. What I what I didn't expect is after I made that video, talked to the guy, basically told him you're a pedo, go fuck yourself. And I, that's actually how I ended it because yeah, I was like, I'm, cool. this be guy's cool. not going to be at all fun to interview or post videos about. The, the only good content I got was from his video. But cool. he got into, like, beef with Steven Crowder. I don't know if you know who that is. Steven, yeah, I know Steven Crowder. He Appar got into beef with... Apparently. I don't, I don't know fuck? because I'm trying to remember the video. He posted, like, a video of him, like, exposing his naked ass and body as, like, a response to Steven Crowder or something. And I, fuck, I saw, like... I saw somebody doing a review of, like, one of his videos, and it had that at the start where he's like, oh, you can, like, find this somewhere. And I was like, what the fuck is... What happened? I Mate. just made a video about this guy, yeah, and this now, guy. It, like, suddenly it became huge. Did you find that, like, affected the views on your video at all? Did it, like, give you a little boost, or did it, that your video just get, like, washed under by the sheer... It got volume? washed under. It's only at, it like, 6.2k views, so... It's band, but yeah, it's, it's fine, fucking... but it was like when I made that, I didn't expect that dude to get lit the fuck up. It was crazy. That, that must have that would have been all over the place, right? Because Steam, like obviously America, like fucking in terms of like I don't want to say I don't even know if it's political com political commentator, right? Because I'm from the UK, I don't know who's fucking who over there. But that's a big name over there, isn't it? Like in some sphere, Stephen Crowder. Uh, kind of. He's a political YouTuber. I don't really have any opinions on it. Because yeah, I don't yeah. state political opinions on YouTube because that would be Good dumb. Um, Too right. But I, it, he's not hard to get into arguments with, from what I know. Oh, but okay. it's hard. That makes sense. But it's it's kind of hard to for somebody who was just making cuties movie reviews to suddenly start beefing with them because no matter what people think Mad. of like Steven Crowder. This dude is, like, objectively worse, no matter what. Yeah, no, Steven Crowder can be an asshole to people. That's cool. But this dude's, like, probably not allowed near elementary schools. He actual should be nonce, like, you know what I mean? Like... He needs to be put under a microscope. <laughs> oh, man. But fuck for you, me. but for you, what was your your best video? It, 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 oh, sorry, yeah, fuck, I forgot about it. We're well, talking about well, the nonce well, this, this, when I When I talk about best, I mean, like, what you enjoyed. Not, like, oh, it got a lot of views. It, it got a lot of views. Uh, I made a track called Cold, which is probably my favorite because it was, I guess, like to enjoy myself. It was the first time I sat down and I'd like got the EQ right. The bass sounded good. And it was like the first, like comparing what came before it. It's almost like the turning point in what I was making. Like, it's not that I don't enjoy the older stuff, but like in terms of like the quality of what I made and how happy I was with the result, I put that track out and I was like, fuck, this sounds so much better than everything else I've made. Like, and in terms of worst... Oh, man, I was fucking looking a minute ago. I have a whole playlist on my channel that's unlisted called Air that you can find, and it's everything that I made and just was, like, experimenting and didn't like. I think there's one... Shit, sorry, I'm going to have to pull it up again. I fucking forgot. We were, we're talking about nonces. I got too involved in the conversation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> fucking hell. Let me I'll tell you my worst one once you... Go for it. Uh, so my worst one, I think, objectively came when I, I basically posted a video uh, where I had emailed yandere dev because i oh, wanted shit. to get an interview the problem is yandere dev is trolled to high heavens because nobody sure. likes him bro and That's so it. i i was thinking i'm like i could get a video interview and dude that shit would blow up nope he didn't yeah. want to do it so like i kind of got into an email back and forth and i i remember the video being like unreasonably long where i think i just went on like tangents and shit and so oh, yeah. when I look back, I don't really want to remove it unless I already did when I got like really drunk, but, of course. um, I, like looking back on it, like just thinking about it, I was like, bro, that was like trash. All it is, is just me looking at an email. Like it's, it's tricky, man. I, I've got a lot of respect for commentary. Cause it's like, 
damn you like especially because a lot of the stuff you say you know it's off the fly right you ain't got a script in front of you for most of it it's yeah like no fucking... i i all of my videos are unscripted there's one video i tried to do scripting for which was like the nick bates video i made and the problem was uh that video was actually that might be my worst one now that i think about oh, it really? that was actually really bad yeah because it was literally me just reading off the wiki and oh man. i it Good, moment of weakness to be honest because i was like i want to talk about them but i i this is this is so fucking long that i'm not going to get any of the details right if i go off the fly so i read off yeah, the wiki and i listened back to my voice and i'm like oh my god i can't do scripts because w the moment i do scripts because like reading in your head and reading aloud is like two different things when you read yeah, in your, your head it sounds better when you when i read aloud so if i'm like reading something It'll Ghost. kind of sound a little like this, and uh, Move and, I'll, and, and I'll just drag ass on it so hard, and yeah. it was just low quality, uh, fucking garbage. It, I'm reading off the Wikipedia, and somebody yeah, called me out in the comments, bro. That shit hurt. Ice. Oh, because <laughs> that, uh, that that really hit me because I'm like, dude, everybody's gonna know that was red. That was just yes. So uh, other than that one video, I have never used scripts, like at all. And it was respect, man, definitely. Uh, yeah, every, you're you're insane, fella. Trust me. <laughs> everything's off the fly. There's videos where I'll, I'll like have to do an entire redo of the video because I'll realize I got everything wrong about it, which is oh, like, shit. I I had this one video where it was on Yandere Dev, and there's like a post made about a controversy where. Now, this might be really big, or it's really small, and if it's really small, I'm an idiot. If Shit. it's really big, I'm an even bigger idiot. So, this guy kind of, like, posted some shit where they're like, oh, Yandere Dev, like, groomed me and, like, legitimately did something with me and yada yada. Uh, I was like, that would be baller content. And I read <laughs> up more on it. <laughs> But, but because Sorry. I, my, oh, that'd be sick, man. No, you gotta remember because yeah, the whole time I have been like, Yandere Dev is a fucking creep, bro, and everybody gotta know this shit. And this was my evidence right here. It was like perfect, laid out. And I was like, dude, if I post this, this shit is gonna bang and everybody will see it. And after yeah. I make the video, I do a little bit of the editing with Windows Movie Baker. Um, yeah, good. Job. Good job. <laughs> the quality stuff. Um, I, I have this sudden realization where I'm like, I need to fact check this. And I kind of like oh. looked at it for like a straight minute. And I was like, hmm, it's no longer, it's no longer posted. Oh. I'm like, it You're was like a 100k views banger. And you the last minute you look around and it's, it's fucking not right. That is, it is. That it is wasn't, lying, I think it was all bullshit. I think it was like legitimately like fan fiction somebody made so probably written about himself mate i'll be honest yeah. with you like. oh no no i've written i've read his fan fiction on stream and what's funny is that stream got copyright claimed because i used you know the song a claire de lune it's this beautiful oh the piano yeah the yeah. piano set beautiful piano set and i used it because i was like uh for the stream i need to get myself into zen mode and i'm gonna yeah, yeah. like and <laughs> i read through it. it i read through his fan fiction garbage he's a terrible human being for making that shit and bastard. I couldn't even make money off it because the <laughs> shit got copyright claimed. The A Claude de, de Lune thing is copyrighted to fuck. And I didn't yeah, know it because I'm like, who made this? Beethoven? He's dead. Yeah, How is he going to copyright claim me? It's old, isn't it, or something? It's, do you know what? Um, I did watch a really banging video uh, by someone who him and his mates got uh, like a chatbot to read out all his posts on a sex doll forum. And it's just one of my favorite pieces of content. Him like talking about can I hold hands with the doll when it go when I go to sleep or will it break? And you're just like, well, fucking, how does your life get to this point, man? Oh like, oh. yeah, I, I remember uh, hearing about the sex doll he has. Uh, yeah. He dressed it up as Zero Suit Samus at one point because he has. That was the one. Have you heard about his weird obsession with Samus? Yeah, I've seen like so. I'm I guess like as a I've just been on the internet for too long. I think so. I know like skirting amounts. I don't know all the details about him, but I know like skirting amounts of him being 
incredibly weird and not being able to answer emails and uh being a nonce apparently now as well so oh, it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> i dropped a one hour video for that <laughs> most of it was That's me going one. i fucking told you i told you but he had nope. he got like this sex doll and i think i can't remember if it was in a stream or it was just a picture but you could see it in the background like laying on his bed and it has the the blue oh. samus suit on with like the oh. blue ponytail <laughs> And I cannot think of the person. He definitely got like multiple urinary tract infections because he doesn't clean that. I bet you he doesn't <laughs> clean it. I, so he actually left it in the background on a stream, right? So it was it because he. I, I I thought he wasn't like even admitting that the thing existed. See, and then he's left it like. I could be wrong, but I think it was either he posted a picture about it or it was in the background of a stream. Oh. Christ, mate! That thing, that thing has been through the wars. I'm telling you, that I'm, poor I fucking feel... doll. I feel bad for it, man. Uh, it needs it needs some that. it needs some therapy. There is. <laughs> some, uh, oh, actually, being maybe we'll... uh, oh no, sorry. You no, no, you no, first. no, you're good. I'm I interviewing say, man, you, like... man. You, oh, you I appreciate that. I appreciate it. Take the spotlight. <laughs> I was I was just thinking, like, if he does eventually go to prison, right, you could probably win that thing at a prison auction and then have it in the background of your videos. You know, don't oh, touch it, you get the clap. But... God, that would be. The if I did that, I'm pretty sure my channel would blow the fuck up this, and people would right, yeah. bully me relentlessly. <laughs> just, just like never touch the thing and you'll be okay. But like yeah, you know, hazmat suit into your house, have uh, it in the background, and maybe I'll, give it a spray with some deodorant. But other than that, I'll have it. I'll have it like in a glass box with like a biohazard symbol on it. Yeah, this will be it. This will be it. No, I think yeah, there's definitely a museum museum of curiosities that would take that thing on. Definitely. Oh my god. Now, also, this this background set is. I, I set this up specifically for this. I've never done this before. If you're wondering Brilliant. how this is hung up, this is going to sound so ghetto. It is hung up because my door has like a coat rack hook. So what I did okay. is I hung it. I did it like this. And then I put the coats on so it would hold. And then I was like, well, fuck, how am I going to stretch it across the room? There's nothing holding it. And I just connected it to a screw on my fan. It is so Fucking loosely up. holding. It like I'm surprised it's held for 50 minutes. As I said to you, man, like sometimes the most scuffed up setup is the way to do it. It's like, you know, got, got to be done. Last minute stuff. I've got um a light box at the moment that I have split open and put against the wall behind my monitor to get slightly more light on my face. So I'm, I'm feeling the same energy as you. What's, don't a, worry. what's a light box? Oh, like a like what you put a little product in uh, to um, if you were taking photos of like a watch or something, right? It's a little box with white walls and a little LED in the top so you could get really bright photos. Obviously, that's no good when I'm trying to light myself up. So I've split the thing in half and got it hanging dangerously off the side of my desk and <laughs> flashing up against the wall to put more light in the room. I can show you the light thing I use. Watch this. My setup is going to completely change when I take the light off. So this, it's a light ring. Oh, sick, man. No yeah, they're they're yeah. pretty cheap on Amazon. So if you're if you're ever looking to, to improve in. the setup... If, if I ever do another interview or some IRL content, mate, I'll be straight on it. Trust me. The the, the one thing I'm I, I don't know if I'll ever start a podcast, but you seem like the kind of person I would love to bring on a podcast. You have just I such this it. kind of like you have a great way of talking, dude. You're you're fun. Thank to you talk so to. much. <laughs> um, just see me when I'm drunk, mate. <laughs> and speaking of which, I was going to ask: are, are you like in college right now, or? So I'm uh, out of college. I'm in work now, like my fucking third year of this. It's uh, yeah, suffering, but you know, as it is, life. Nah. Cool. I get, I get to make sh shitty music in my spare time and spread it around the world. You know? Shit, I mean, man. If, if you get big with that music, there you go. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is it. Maybe I can afford the real ring light. This, then it will all be okay, man. It all, it, once <laughs> you afford that ring light, dude, that one ring light changes you know, honestly. everything. Everything. It'll be like um, the, you know, in the photo where the family sun appear like manifest out of thin air, and I'm like, wow, I really made it, you know, I got the ring light, some shit like that. <laughs> that's that's the big like, you'll you'll be sitting there, you'll you'll buy the ring light, and then your view counts for no reason. It, you didn't even post a video with it. The view counts just start going up, going up. It's like oh, going up. That's the like... ring light. It's, it's the ring light. Post loans on the phone, mate. You heard about <laughs> the ring light? He wants he wants to do track. Yeah, oh, he fuck, wants no, to do track. <laughs> Oh my god. I, I love He knows I'm busy. Yeah, you ever hear the weird stuff of Buzz Malone? No, I didn't. Do you tell? Uh it, like so he used to be on like hella drugs uh, course, at one yeah. point. And he's like he claims he's off drugs. And I I, I could believe it. Uh, he's saying it. I'm not but like he acts so weird at his concert to the point people think he's reverted back to drugs. 
I saw the clips of him like laying on top of his microphone with yeah, his eyes rolling. Yeah, that's his head, that's like, the big screaming. one to use. That's it. Yeah, he's he's yeah. I I have no doubt that he's big into it. Like, but yeah, I mean, I wish the best for the man. He's a lovely looking. He's a lovely fellow. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, no, definitely off his fucking nut, hundred percent. Also, I see a guitar in the background. What you got? Uh, what is that one? That is an Ibanez fucking Frankenstein that a mate sold me. Uh, that's made of about three different guitars, and then I got another one around there, which is a chord that's like fucking. I haven't clipped the strings on. I, I I have tried doing like live. The only time I've ever put a guitar in music was that collaboration track I mentioned with Omni, and he was like, "I want an acoustic outro," so I did like some really basic shit and sent that to him. So I have got I've got live recording in there somewhere, but I think. Yeah, I, th- I I enjoy like going into the depths of the internet to find samples far more than I do trying to fucking write shit on a guitar. Yeah. Well, well I, I think the sampling you do, from what I've heard, is all very cool. Especially since you use a freaking machine for pigs amnesia is like, I would have <laughs> never guessed that. Because uh, the whole time I was listening to it, I'm like, I wonder if he like put this together himself or like, I wonder like what sample this is from. And when you hit me with amnesia machine for pigs, I was like, like, well that that's wasn't any of my guesses at all machine mad. for pigs yep. was like one of the amnesia games that got like the most hate it was yeah it was fucking from what i hear it was terrible i didn't even play that one uh, to be honest, I, yeah. see the but, story for it is really cool it's just the mechanics in it man really I th- yeah, really is it just like uh because of course the first one i guess it's like hasn't aged perfectly but i guess it was like in, introduced a lot of the whole mechanics with like the fucking lantern and all your insane insanity and shit right yeah and then the, I guess the the I did Joe I did watch a video on this a while ago actually when I was fucking going to bed the was by it, Mandalore was was it the uh, the dude who has like the animated things the animated things uh you no, the feds is... going past your face they found the fed uh, they found the fed <laughs> no found the fed bro found the fed no, carry on um I forget how he does it it's like little animated stick figure things where he basically did a huge video talking about why machine for pigs was bad and they like removed the sanity tactic they removed any like semblance of like oh you don't die in this you just get locked up yes because it had the big pig things that would run at you and you just respawn like five steps back yeah. and then it was yeah, it looked yeah d- shit, it, i remember in that video uh he had an uh, animated part where he had one of the man pigs on a stripper pole and that was like the main thing i remembered from it and i was like <laughs> what the fuck yeah it was I think a lot of the time when it comes to like finding weird samples is like one thing I love is there's a, a split off of uh, black metal called um, is it DB DBSM De- no hang on DSBM Dis- depressive suicidal black metal and it's what? like mo- primarily Mexican teenagers who are making these filthy like black metal tracks in their bedrooms but it's sometimes got like the filthiest clean guitar of all time and so I just like g- dig through a playlist of songs with like 15 views and try and find stuff to chop. And then the other one is like, you know, I say game OSTs are sick. And then often I'll like find some, I produce someone I like for just like a track and not going to use it, right? Look them up and then look at their older projects and go way back and just go through everything. And like you eventually find something good. You know what? Since we're on the topic of amnesia, I figured I'd mention if you're looking for like ambience and stuff that you think would be like really cool to chop, have you heard of Soma? S O M A? So Soma is one of my favorite games of all time. It Literally, is amazing. But- Fucking bro, that ending put me in the Ooh. bin. I was just like, fucking yeah, no. I think uh, I neglected that game for so long because everyone was telling me like, you like the weird existential shit. Uh, existential shit. You will love fucking Soma, and I just never played it. And then when I got round to it, I was like, bro, I've been missing out for so long. This is sick. Like, oh yeah, that shit was a powerhouse. Oh, I have sampled Soma. I have sampled. Wait, Soma. you have? Yeah, remember... yeah, hang on. Let me just work out which track that is. Sorry, two seconds. I found the end piano, and then I found a uh, fella playing it on guitar, and then I chopped it off. It's a really old track of mine. What's it called? Fella. Two seconds. Uh, two seconds, bud. Oh, which one was it? I think it might be... Was it Inhound? Yeah. I'll send you a link to it. You can give it a listen when you want. Epic. I was about to say, it's like, I don't know what what the like legality of like playing your music on the video is. Uh, you, any, are you going to copyright like, claim? If these... So I, with like, especially the early days, I was like, well, if it gets copyright claims by the original person who made the track, I don't care, right? Because it's a small song. So then anything I've made since then that goes on the Spotify stuff, I've like properly cleared or I've like used only pr- samples I've paid for and shit like that or like splice and that. And then, but like tracks like these, go, go fucking head whenever you want, mate. Like if it's not on the Spotify, then you can use it because then it won't get claimed. You can use it for whatever you want. That's awesome. Yeah, because I, I was going to say, one thing I did want to do is try to do like, a game review and I, I was thinking i'm like 
dude i could use like one or two or cavity songs for like some of those scenes in this game and it would fucking work and oh, I, go for it, man. the, the only problem sense. is i want to make the game review i haven't finished the game because it's so fucking is... hard which game is this by chance uh it's it's this indie game called dead cells or something like yeah i know me... of dead cells no, i ain't played it but i know which no, it is yeah dead cells the samurai one let me look empty shell empty shell that's empty it's shell. a japanese made game they made one which was sort of i think it was like a game jam project and then oh, shit. they made a no, they're making a second one basically as a more high quality project where they're like really going in on it and i was like dude i would love to make a game review of this if i wasn't like smashing my table half the time i was playing it fucking hard man so I, yeah it's fucking tough and it doesn't help I, I went back to the game to be like oh this shit's probably like super easy i'm gonna do extreme mode because i was able to clear through some of these levels and i did extreme and i was like no no my blood pressure is about to go through the ceiling i'm good <laughs> it's oh mate fucking i was gonna say as well with uh with the music literally mate if there's any music you want to use just let me know even if it's on spotify i can try whitelist you for it doesn't matter like and that goes for like anything on my channel i don't give a shit it's cool epic one one thing i was going to bring up you said what was it you started with minecraft videos let, let, oh no don't make that sound uh, like my start that was not my start <laughs> like, like any good 13 year old mate i was there i was like the kids clearly know how to need need to know how to make a golden apple right so the tutorial was how to be made but uh fucking hell it's um i think that's what's shocking is like these days i'm like i've got like so like a few accounts and i'm like totally on lock with them if, if someone tried to like hack into an account you know right and then like when i was a kid i'm like oh, i have six youtube channels and half of them are still up like out there and I'm like, oh, this is just, like, going to haunt me one day so fucking badly. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's... Wait, can you not get into them to, like, clear them? No, I can't, can't do shit. I ain't got the email. <laughs> Don't even know what the email's called. Fucking... There's me... Oh, no, I'm not going to say that game, actually, because then it might actually be findable. And if one of my mates is watching this, he'll be like, right, I'm going on the hunt. I'm going to fucking find the... One of his old YouTubes, but yeah, it's important that you make complete dog shit content when you're a kid, because it's character yeah. building. Well, I... So... So... I, thankfully this this channel's purged and that's it's gone can't be found but i used to have a channel when i was in elementary to middle school so okay young. quite young then really and, yeah yeah and that's that's kind of like where i started but i was like really really dumb at the time i i always tell people it's like if you knew me in high school middle school or elementary school just remember a completely different person now don't don't use that yeah, as a reference this... please i get you but I get when you. i made videos Dude, it was just like crapshoot content where I would upload anything. If if I kept going on that path, I'd probably end up as like Chris Chan, who's the most well documented person on earth. <laughs> oh boy, I'm up to date in the series, I, mate. Don't you worry. I I was posting everything. I was like, yes. oh, I just went to this cool restaurant today, and I have like oh, a 40 minute mate. video where it's just me and my family eating. <laughs> it's fucking. But I th I think that was like there was a lot of people like especially because the bar was so much lower back then as well right oh like, yeah people were just posting shit so that was definitely in a sea of things so i think it's a bit more normal definitely but certainly something that if anyone has a copy of they could just like rinse the shit out of you with fucking oh yeah there was some oh sorry uh oh no i i was just going oh yeah yeah um back when i was in college uh they were doing fucking music uh doing like the metal shit there was some there was a lad i knew on my course and he was like yeah no when Back when I was a kid, we used to make really embarrassing scooter videos with our friends. Like, it was terrible. I'm like, oh, that's really terrible. Gets drunk one night and shows me. So, obviously, next day in college, straight on the big projector, I'm like, everyone have a fucking look at this, boys. No. This his video of him and his mates. Had to be done. Character building. Character building. Yeah, I still remember I made a video with one of my friends uh, when I had that old channel. I'm not even going to say the name of it because it was legitimately, like, poison in my bloodstream. Um, <laughs> so... It was me and him screwing around with an electric scooter that I just bought. And when I wrote it, I, I had this old military Bulgarian helmet and welding goggles. I used to wear my oh, welding shit. goggles from that day with this mask in my videos. Oh, shit. It Joe, I've seen... I, it, when I was looking at your channel, I've definitely seen that. Definitely these, seen that. These, uh, these have been through with me since Fuck. elementary school. Dead ass. Damn, man. And now they Fucking finally man. broke. Which... Shit. I, I I don't I might be able to get them fixed, which would be cool. I kind of oh. want to like get a leather strap for it though, instead of like this shitty. 
I think they should go in the glass cabinet at the back next to Yandiri Dev Sextile. I Absolutely. Think they, those, those are like the channel I'm history, mate. That channel is history, channel you know? history. Um, it's a relic. But uh, like for for the cavity channel, what did you start off on Stockholm the for, for posting on YouTube or was there no. different content that you removed? Oh, uh, as in like uh, in terms of like music. Uh, so well, yeah, because I I never posted to so the cavity channel itself has never been anything but music. Um, I uh, but yeah, no, I started with that first EP way back. But I'm I'm I did have like older channels, and I was thinking like, oh, well, this has like seventy subs on it. I could like repurpose this for music. But I was like. If I want to get like real feedback on what I'm making, I want to just do it from scratch and just try and pull a new audience all together and just get like actual sort of reaction to what I'm making and seeing what I'm doing. But uh, I do, um, I do want to make some like music videos for some of the music. I think that'd be tight. So that'd be really cool. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I bet you could um, bust some cool shit out. Yeah, no, I went and brought one of those like old shitty v, uh, VCR cameras. So I'm going to charge that up. I'm going on a trip to Berlin with some mates soon. So Ooh, dude, take I can't that wait with. To see it. That's it. Get everybody get watching. And just get ready for that. This is it, fucking uh, all the boys out there. Just pass the camera between people. Blurred faces for out. It looks like Joji a glimpse of his looking shit. It'll be I, great fun. I think that's well, the. What, I, I swear you had before your new profile picture. I swear you had a different picture because uh, I don't remember what it was. Yeah. But I, I like the new picture. It, it looks actually pretty baller. But I, I'm trying oh. to remember what the old one was. I had so the original. Oh fucking hell, ego. <laughs> so the first picture, like we're talking like four profile pictures ago, or whatever you call it, icons. I was like, well, I need, I want something for this project. And at the time, my mate hadn't finished the album cover because I was like, I'll just put the album cover as the channel profile. It doesn't matter. And I was like, well, actually, I want something different. So I found someone, you know, Junji Ito, the, the artist? Yes. The the yes. Book? You like his stuff. I love So I stuff. found, I was looking up on, tw uh, on Google, like Junji Ito inspired art. And I found someone on Twitter who just did the sickest stuff. It looked like more or less exact to his stuff. And I was like, fuck it, I'm going to commission something. So I like, immediately just click through i'm logged in on desktop send them a dm i'm like yo what's your price list they're like this i'm like i want like a fox and i want it in the junji ito style it'll look sick and literally that was my only communication they're like cool sent like 60 quid to them they do it get it back and i'm like this is the fucking sickest thing and it was perfect i used it for the first month but it didn't really fit the music in the end i was like whatever and then it was when i went back to them and i was like i should commission them again i realized that through my ignorance of clicking straight through google into their profile and commissioning this piece the rest of their profile was hardcore furry porn commissions oh no i was just like i was like this is it mate i was like Cooked. can't believe Cooked. it but, you know I'm the, I'm funded I funded the furry porn economy. So you so you, so, you, know, so you just this. went oh, I need to commission this. Click click. Hey, can you do you this? Six, I, 60 I was like, Yeah, that works. You know something like, so sick, dude, like just spam straight in, spam straight through. And I didn't even look on their page at all. I was just like this one piece. Of, I saw their one post. Click up, click through, DM them, finish it. And then when I go back again, I'm like the top of the profile is quite normal. And then the more you scroll, I'm like fucking hell. There's like fucking furry inflation porn all over this. And I'm like Jesus Christ. I I will I will like, say the image was cool. You should use it as like an album cover. No, I've done, now you know that you'll never look at it the same again. You no, know what the person who do you know where the person who drew that? Do you know where their hands might have been? We I don't know oh, either. We I, can't. Oh yeah, that's a good point. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, that's it, mate. Honestly, the state of the monitor that they were drawing on, you know, what could all could be all over it. Got to be careful, mate. Can't can't be using that up. Yeah. All right, sir. Definitely. I I think this was great. I, 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 had a, sick, man. I had a great time. You are a really cool dude. And I, I'm so glad I got to meet you. I've been listening to your music for dude, a while. Honestly, it's been so nice speaking to you. And like, I really appreciate the questions. Yeah. You came prepared. Yeah. And like, I, I really, and you've said so much nice stuff about my work. Like, I really like what you do too, honestly. And I'm glad we got to finish from furry inflation. Well. <laughs> yeah, like, that's, that's, that's a good finishing point. Um, but dude, I, 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 the one of the big things why I wanted to really get this interview is, is I'm like, this guy needs more traction, dude. I love his oh, shit. Sure. People need to see this. It's good stuff. So I appreciate that. Moment, so honestly, yes. to anybody who's made it this far, I'm going to leave Cavities, uh, his YouTube channel link in the description. Please check it out. Uh, we're going to try to get more artists to do interviews. If, yeah. if we can, Oh God, I'd love to interview fentanyl. I wonder how they are. I was about to bring that up, bro. You gotta get fentanyl. That'd be a Dude. mental interview. I've oh. got no idea what they're like. I've seen them on Twitter and I, they look mental. So I, I think they're like, uh, hop on. It's like, uh, so are you available to, uh, I'm, I'm in the middle of shooting up crack. Uh, can we like <laughs> hit delay by 40 minutes until the high goes oh, away? It's like, oh, bro, fuck. it's empty here, you know? Yeah, I'm on a downer right now. Can you hold out for half hour? Yeah, like I'd that. love to talk to you a little more after the.
the interview, but I, I have Definitely like not. one small thing to do, and that that immediately cuts the interview though. Nah, it's, it's all good, bro. It's all right. Cool. It is what it is. Yeah. I'll definitely right. grow up.